Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video, we will talk about one of the features provided by Azure, uh, provided by the Databricks known as Auto Loader. So let, let's try to understand this Auto Loader. I mean, this Auto Loader in a simple terms, okay, simple language, instead of directly going into the definition provided by the Databricks or directly writing the codes, okay. Let's understand like why actually it came into the picture, okay. So think, auto loader as a robot okay that will help you to bring the data for you guys now when i say robot and bringing the data for you it means let's think let's imagine that you have a lot of data stored in a different places okay in a storage room now what auto loader do it will go into those places it will grab the data, bring it to your Databricks workspace so that you can immediately start working on it. Now, the best part is, again, you can you can um, ask Autoloader to do it automatically on regular basis, like every day, every week, or uh, maybe at a specific schedule time, okay? So this means that you don't have to spend time manually getting the data and bringing it into your Databricks yourself, right? So auto loader will make all those things easier for you. So if we are, if we, now if you try to explain auto loader is, then auto loader makes the process of getting your data into Databricks easier and more efficient. It will save your time and effort so that you can focus on other things, okay? I hope it is clear. Now let's quickly switch over to the definition provided by the Databricks in his on his uh, basically on his site. Okay, so auto loader basically what 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 is written here is auto loader incrementally and efficiently process new data files as they arrive into the cloud storage without any additional setup. Right, that's what we understood. Right, so it means it it will basically work for incremental load and if you see here sorry if you see here on the first day you will see that there are three files which are there into the raw location or maybe your source location and they process to the target location now the next day comes and the new files come into that particular location the source location so what auto loader will do auto loader will check like which file comes and once it is able to identify that file, it will process that file to your Databricks workspace so that you can directly work on that. Okay. So now it means like all, I mean, you don't have to do any kind of uh, metadata or metadata logic implementation for to, to fetch the new files or to find out the new arrived files or you don't have to set up any kind of uh, basically watermark columns and all everything, right? So now the next question is when we say like these files, what all files Databricks or auto loader supports, okay? So the next, okay. So the next part is to check what all files are supported by auto loader. So most of the files are supported by Autoloader like JSON, CSV, Parquet, Avro, ORC, Text, Binary File. Okay, so I think most of the source files which which in which we generally get the data are can be handled by the Autoloader. Let's move to the other next slide. In the next slide, we will we will talk about the benefits of Autoloader. Okay, so when I say benefits of Autoloader, obviously we, which we discussed till now, right? It will smooth your process to getting the data into your uh, Databricks workspace. And you don't have to maintain any metadata, right? So that's what is written here. So no need to store any metadata to find the new files, okay? It will detect the new files on its own. Now, the next benefit is you can perform streaming data as well as batch processing, okay? Based on your requirement. Now, the third thing is automation of data loading process, right? This, this is the same thing basically, but here we are talking about like how it actually identify which file has arrived, first of all. And the second question is when it is arrived into the cloud native component. So when I say cloud native component means a storage location, 
Okay, so we need to find out a way by which actually autoloader identifying like when the file came, okay, and when it has to process that file. Now, let's try to understand this with the two terms which are given, okay. The first one is the cloud files data reader. So when I say cloud files data reader, it means the storage location provided by the different um, service providers like Amazon, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. Okay, so if you go through the definition, it means a cloud file data reader is a component that reads the data from the cloud-based file system. Okay, so if you are reading some data from the cloud or, or a file system, okay, then it will be treated as a cloud file data reader. Now, what is cloud notification service? So if you remember, like, or if you have seen it, I don't know, but when you go to your portal or uh, in your storage location, whenever you upload a new file, you will get to see one notification on top of it, right? The right hand side on top, basically in the Azure, right? So you can see that notification. That notification will actually help um, autoloader to identify if the new files arrived or not. That's what is written here. So cloud notification service are the services provided by the cloud-based file system. Okay, so this is provided by the Microsoft Azure or Amazon or the Google Cloud itself. Okay, that will allow you to receive notification when change occurs in the file system. So whenever you perform any kind of change in the storage location, if you are uploading something or if you are deleting something, you will get one notification and based on that notification, even your um, uh, data loader will work okay so these are the two terms basically we use the cloud notification service and the cloud file data reader now let's talk about how actually it detects i mean when we say it will detect the file based on the cloud notification service how actually internally it does okay Let, let's try to see that part also and what all different options we have there okay so let me switch to the next slide yeah so auto loader file detection modes okay so basically there are two modes by which you can detect your new file arrival the first one is the directory listing mode when i say directory listing mode it's a default mode okay so if you don't specify anything while reading the data or while streaming the data using auto loader then it will by default treat that load mode as a directory listing mode okay so let's go through it, what exactly it is. So auto loader uses the directory listing mode by default, okay? In directory listing mode, auto loader identifies the new files by listing the input directory, okay? So it will check that input directory and if any files arrived based on that notification, it will load the data or stream the data without any permission configuration, okay? Right, because it already have that permission for the directory. So it will quickly go check the new file arrival. It will bring it to you. Now think about a uh, problem where you have multiple directories. Okay, let's say there is one directory and inside it there are multiple directories. And now you have to find out the files which are which just, just now, let's say there are multiple files got ingested in all these different folders. Okay, so in that case, it is really difficult and it is really time consuming for autoloader to use the directory listing mode and it will be a uh, basically a, uh, you can say, a, a costly process for it, right? It will take a lot of time. So in that case, your file notification mode will work where what it will do, autoloader automatically set up a notification service. Okay, it will set up a notification service, a queue service that subscribe the file event from the input directory, okay? So as soon as you're you are, uh, you are talking about this, like the file notification service, and it says that notification service and the queue service, and these things will be set up automatically. To set up all these things, you have to pass few parameters, okay? I'll, 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 I'll go through those parameters, no worries maybe in another video but this video we will be mostly concentrating on the directory listing mode okay how we basically read the data automatically using autoloader now 
Uh, now coming back to file notification mode, as I was saying that we need to pass some configuration like, like the subscription ID, tenant ID, or your storage ID, or client ID. You have to provide all those informations as a part of option while declaring the file notification mode. Okay, and based on those options, it will actually create these services on the fly. You don't have to create. It will create and based on those files, those subscribe events, it will identify what all files are placed. Okay, so if you see here, you can use file notification to scale auto loader to ingest millions of files in an hour, right? So if you're getting so many files like continuously, then you should use the file of notification mode, right? So I hope the difference between both of them is clear and when, which one we have to use, you, you might be aware now, okay? You must be uh, un understood basically. Now let's, let's quickly go through and see how we can basically stream the data into the database using autoloader. Okay, so this is the code basically by which you can stream the data into the autoloader. Let's try to understand here. Now, the first line is we are using the same thing, right? Read stream format, right? But here we are saying cloud files. So whenever you define that format is cloud file, it means the Databricks will understand that we are talking about the autoloader. Okay, because autoloader will treat all those files as a cloud file. Okay, now... Now it understood that it has to read as in the cloud file, but still you have to pass another option saying that what is the source file format? Now, the source file format is CSV. That's what we have uh, mentioned here, right? So it's a mandatory parameter or mandatory option you have to provide. Apart from this, if you don't provide schema location, it won't work. So you have to provide schema location as well. It will store your schema for the file so that later on it will use that schema for your uh, schema related things like uh, uh, schema evaluation and other things, right? And the, the fourth one is basically header, where we are saying header is true. It's a basic option which we generally use when the file is having headers, okay? And then the source data location from where exactly we need to load that file. So this is how we can read the data using autoloader. So let me quickly switch over to the Databricks workspace and we will see how we can load that data. <clears throat> okay, let me delete all these. Let me clear this. Okay, so if you see, oh, great. Hmm. So the problem here is the SPN is, uh, okay, my cluster is, Terminate it. Let me start this cluster in meanwhile. I'll pause the video so that it won't waste your time. Yeah, so now the cluster is ready. So the first command here is basically to set up the SPN so that I can access the storage location. And if you see in this command two, I have set up few uh, few path, one is for source data location where I have one file to be processed in a sample file form, in a sample file folder or container, okay? Basically the folder. So that's what I have passed here. The target one, which I wanted to create my, my data files. Then the checkpoint, which will be created by um, your Databricks itself, I mean to say autoloader itself, and then the last one is the schema location where it will be storing the schema for our future reference. Okay. So <clears throat> the third one is basically, let me run this command, sorry. And the third command will actually show you the file which I have already there. And it's a CSV file, as you can see, the name is merge sample data one CSV file. <clears throat> it's a very small file just for the demo purpose. And this is the code which I was uh, referring just now. Okay, so the first line, again, we are reading the cloud files since we are using autoloader. That's what's the identification of autoloader. Then we are passing everything as a cloud file, remember. Okay, so we are saying we wanted to process a cloud file format in a cloud file format, the CSV file. Then cloud file schema location, we will be storing at the schema location path. And then we are saying that the file is having headers and 
it has to be loaded from this source data location. So let me run this quickly. Okay, so what it will do, if you see here in my sample, uh, in my container, now I have one more folder called schema. And inside schema, we will see one file. It's a JSON file where it will hold the schema for the file. Okay, it will store the schema information related to the file. So that's what after reading the streaming, we'll get to see this folder, remember, okay. Now let's try to write the file. Before writing, let, let's see basically how we can write the file. Let me go back, okay. Yeah, so this is the code by which we can write the file or uh, in a delta location, right? We'll use the same logic, write streaming, which we use in structure streaming as well, format as delta. Then we are saying that we need a checkpoint location. This is the checkpoint location, which I will be passing as a path, right? And uh, if you don't provide this checkpoint location, remember it will give you an error because checkpoint location is mandatory while writing the delta table using autoloader, okay? <clears throat> then we have a output mode where we have append. There are other modes also like complete, overwrite, or and uh, yeah. So there are other modes also. I can I can create a separate video on top that of that. But yeah, there are other modes also which you can use. And then we are saying start where the target location. Okay, so it will start writing the data into this target location, and it will create the checkpoints. Okay, so what checkpoint is, we will talk about it. So let's quickly see how we can run this write command as well. Okay, to write the data as in a delta table <clears throat> using cloud. So if you see checkpoint location is not defined. Great, I have ran it. Okay, let me run it again. We'll see why it shows, I don't know. And let's try to run again. Maybe some issue with the, okay, spelling. Okay, let's try to run it. <clears throat> yeah, so it started the streaming. And as, as soon as you will see, it will give you how much data it will read, okay? Let's run it. It will show you till now how much data it already read. Yeah, so if you see input row 10, and then we are getting the row count in that particular location as 10 as well, okay? And after some time, now it's zero because now there is no file. So now the input location is zero, batch ID is one, okay? Till now it processed only one batch, right? Let's try to put one more file, but before uh, ingesting that file or uh, saving that file into our source location, let's see what all folders are created now. Because earlier we had only sample files and schema. Now we have two more folders. One is autoloader where we are storing our delta tables. Okay. And then we have a checkpoint folder. So let's talk about this checkpoint now. So what this checkpoint basically do is, it will store the information related to the file which we processed, okay? It will create these three folders. The first one is the source or yeah, basically first one is the source where we have to see like, or where it will tell us like how much data we need to store, okay? So as soon as we'll start streaming, it will first create the source and it will record those uh number of records okay it will basically save those number of records that okay we need to process 10 number of records now offset will hold the current offset value of the delta table so initially it was zero right because we don't have any data into the delta table so it was zero right and then commit is something where it will store the data and it will keep on checking until it has been processed successfully Okay, once it is processed, the offset value will be 10. Okay, it means the first commit is done and the offset value becomes 10. It means now we have the 10 number of records in it. So these kind of information will be stored in these particular folders. And, and metadata for these folders will be stored in this metadata file. Okay, so this is the output folder structure and this is what 
we call checkpoints into the uh, data loader okay let's try to see by uploading one more file now i will go to the sample files i will upload one more file now <clears throat> that's a second okay so as soon as i have uploaded here now we'll see if the number of row will be changed or not okay see now the number of rows is 10 again okay and if you see in the dashboard as well once it start reading some data there will be a spike always and if there is no data there won't be any spike okay so this is how you can check your data also and if you see the batch id 2 is completed okay and now if you try to count within the same location earlier it was 10 right it should be 20 now or maybe 21 i don't know yeah so now it is 20 so this is how this streaming will work right this new for uh like the identification of new file load will be done in the auto loader so i hope this video will be helpful for you guys thank you thanks for watching this video bye